Welcome to the Phil Steele Plus Tour for November the 4th. Up for you today, I've got your usual six selections. Selections, 28, 19, and 2, 60% on our, for the year. And then the uh, quick hitters, which had a hot streak there for a while, had another off week last week and dropped a 22 and 18, 55% on the year. Still a good year for the quick hitters. Anytime you're above 500, you're doing well. But uh, let's hope we get the quick hitters rolling today. And uh, I've got, like I said, six selection, five quick hitters as usual, so let's get right to it. We'll start off with the Tulane Tulsa, and it's one of the more popular features here on the uh, Phil Steele Plus Tour, and that is the computer projection for the underdog to outgain their opponent. Last week, that play was Louisville, plus the points over West Virginia, naturally an outright upset winner. Uh, the underdog to outgain the opponents on a 4-0 streak now. We had Hawaii plus the points over Nevada. Uh, we had Iowa State plus the points over Kansas State. And we had North Texas plus the points over FAU. And now Louisville over Wake Forest. Let's hope we make it five in a row this week. we got Tulane against Tulsa. Let's cut right to the chase. We'll click open my box score. And once again, when you get inside the press box, Inside the press box, not only gives you my complete forecast on the game, I look at everything, break it down, give you my prediction, but I don't make my prediction until I look at my computer's forecast. And as you can tell here, it's saying Tulsa has a 416 to 379 yard edge in the game. It does show I'm losing by five, but keep in mind they're getting seven and a half at home. A couple things to point out here. While Tulane has this great record, they've only got one loss all year. In conference play, they're actually minus six yards per game. Did you know that? I didn't until I was looking here at the matchups. When you look down here, this breaks it down into conference, non-conference. This time of year, use the conference and use the last four weeks. Those two are very valuable. This gives you the current form of the team. You're going to notice on the Phil Steele Plus Tour today, I'm going to do a lot of last four week stuff because that tells you the type of form that the opponent's in. But conference is valuable because you can look at the season to date stats but if you beat some FCS opponent like here, Tulane beat Elkhorn State and had a 449-yard edge. They had a 152-yard edge against UMass, 198 against Southern Miss. In non-conference play, they're plus 200. But in conference play, only minus 6 yards per game. Now, Tulsa is minus 38, but they've also taken on Cincinnati, SMU, teams like that. So, uh, overall, that's a pretty good record there. The stats say... Take Tulsa with a 415 to 375 yard edge. And if you're an angle guy, how about this one? Uh, Scott Montgomery, the head coach of uh, Tulsa, or Philip Montgomery, I'm sorry, the head coach of Tulsa. If you go back and take a look at the uh, magazine, and or here, once again, you get the last 40 years results. I, I love this. When you come down here to the bottom, this tells you how long Philip Montgomery's been there. He's been there since 2015. So you can go back up here now and go back to 2015 and do your own research on it. But since 2015, uh, when he took over, Montgomery is 21-8 and eight as a dog when he's an underdog of 7-plus and on a current 12-1 and one run. Now, you can look at your magazine for last year, but like Cincinnati, plus 22-and-a-half, they covered. Uh, plus 14 or plus 24 against Ohio State last year. They covered plus 12 and a half against Oklahoma State last year. And these are teams that finished very strong. Oklahoma State, Ohio State, and Cincinnati covered all three games. 12 and 1 is the current run as a dog. The computer says they outgained their opponent. So your underdog outgained opponent play this week is Tulsa plus 20 or plus seven and a half against Tulane. That's Tulsa plus seven and a half against Tulane. Well, we got two service academies facing off this week, so you know what I'm playing. You, you knew that. You played it. You play it all the time. You've learned that here on Phil Steel Plus. I think it was five years ago or when I started the Phil Steel Plus tour, I showed you the Army-Navy game, and we've just rolled on these things. Now, once again, this is one where the computer is going to show Air Force and Army, it's going to show Air Force winning the game. It's going to show points in the game. The total is 40 and a half, but we're going under. Why is that? Well, two things happen when service academies play service academies. First of all, and you've heard this before, but for anybody that's brand new to the Phil Steel Plus Tour, we'll put it up there. 
Uh, we've won enough of these games with it. Uh, the service academies use the option offense because it gives them advantage. Their opponents don't normally prepare for the option. They can't replicate it in practice. And it's a good thing to take on an opponent with only one week to prepare for the option. Well, guess what? Service academies play against the option all the time. And if they want to go against it in practice, they're going against one of the best options uh, things in the country so the defenses prepare well. Also, when you've got two teams running the football all game long, that clock just keeps on running all game long. Now, has this had a factor? Well, Air Force played Navy earlier. You know we use that. We're going to click on that. Look at the Air Force Navy over here. When you look at the last 25 years matchups, and once again, the purpose of this is to show you how to use Phil Steel Plus. If you click on the opponent, you get the last 25 years at your fingertips. Now, this tells you who won the game, straight up or against the spread. You don't have to look at the score. Green means they won the game. Red means they lost the game. And in this case, it's Air Force. So Air Force has won the last two, but they have all these losses here. Now we look at the over-unders. Uh, this is Air Force and Navy. You have a bunch of unders in this one. You do have a push and, and two overs in the last five years when Air Force plays Navy. But they're playing Army, so let's go take a look at that one. When you play Army, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight unders, four upsets in the last six years. So the underdog does well. Look, underdog one, underdog one, underdog one, underdog one, underdog one, underdog one. The underdog is 6-0-1 against the spread. So that would lean with Army, but that's not the play. The play's the under. Uh, once again, all those unders. And then, of course, the famed Army-Navy, which making quite a... We started this back when I was at ESPN. Uh, so that was years ago, uh, four, three, four years ago. And, well, this is when I started there. Uh, but let's look at Air Force against Navy. And here we go. Look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 13, 14, 15, 16. If you read the Inside the Press Box newsletter, you know that every year I pick the under, every year it wins. So it's option versus option. Uh, despite the fact Army's given up all these yards on the ground, these are not option teams they're giving up the yards to. Against the option, they play better. Uh, if you look at Air Force, uh, what do they do against the option? They hold Navy to 114 yards rushing in that game. Air Force only had 200 yards rushing. That was their lowest total rushing of the year, except when they played Wyoming. It's because it's option versus option. So we got option versus option. We're taking the under. You guys knew that would be a play. You didn't even have to turn the tape on. You said, oh, option, option, we're going under. Air Force and Army under 40 and a half. All right, let's look to my last four weeks game of the week. And this one I find fascinating because I don't know if I've seen two teams headed in completely opposite directions. We got Boise State on one side and we got BYU on the other. Now, BYU started out the season pretty good. 2-0, and 4-1, and they were looking good. Their last four weeks, they've just fallen off the table. Look at this, minus 99 yards per game. Their defense has given up 528 yards per game. Uh, and the offense generating just 348. They're minus 180 yards per game the last four weeks. They got blown out by Liberty, lost last week at home to East Carolina. Now they've got to travel. Well, Boise State's the exact opposite. They opened up the season 2-2. Two and two. At this point, after four games, they fired their offense coordinator. Now, if you click on individual player stats, you'll see that Hank Bachmeyer was the quarterback. Well, Bachmeyer said when they fired the offense coordinator, guess what? I'm out of here. I'm keeping my year eligibility. This thing's going south. I'm leaving. So Taylor Green took over. Now, Taylor Green's a very mobile quarterback, and you'll see his rushing stats here, 105 in the first game. They've cut down on his running. He hasn't had to run, but he can run if he needs to. But look at his passing numbers. 48 against San Diego State, 127, 207, 305. If you're a fantasy football player, look at these individual stats. And if you want to know how they've done in past years, you could go back to 2021 and see how they did. So how did Boise do against BYU? You could see the individual players. You could see that George Halani missed the game against BYU last year. And that's important because George Halani is their best running back by far. And let's see what happened this year. Did Halani play? Halani missed the game against BYU. Now let's take a look at this year's stats. And we could see that. Let's get them up there. Come on. There we go. Halani is back in action. And when George Halani plays, he gets 100 yards generally. When he's 100%, and look at this, 108, 157, 131, 110. So Halani's actually getting to take on BYU for the first time. They beat BYU on the road last year. And since 
they've gone to Taylor Green. Look at this, Green. They are plus 235 yards per game. You talk about a red-green matchup. Look at all the green here. Green is good numbers. Red is bad numbers. It's a pure red-green matchup the last four weeks. Does that show in the last four weeks' power ratings? Now, as you know, the average game grade right out here is invaluable. This has nothing to do with over here for BYU. It has nothing to do with BYU's grade. BYU has nothing to do with it at all. It only takes into account who you played and what your stats were against them. So in the last four weeks, taking on these four teams with these kind of stats, they are playing to an average game grade of 89.4. Meanwhile, Boise State, taking on these teams with these kind of stats, is playing to an average game grade of 114.5. Throw in the four-point home field edge for the blue turf uh, for Boise. You're looking at 118.5. Versus 89.4, so that's uh, 28, 29.5, 29.4 for Boise State. Boise State by 29.4, says the last four weeks. Guess what? Boise State, uh, let me just double check the line on that game. I think it's only right around seven, but I want to make sure I get you the proper line on it. I'm looking at the lines right now. Okay, they are laying eight right now. So BYU is minus eight. We are going to take BYU minus eight. The last four weeks says Boise by 29.4 in this game. And remember, we've got the individual player stats. you got a better offense with Taylor Green. They're always better when George Helani's in the game running the football. And quite frankly, I'm not sure why BYU has fallen off the table. But look at this rush defense. 260 yards per game, 6.1 they're giving up on the ground, and 76% completions being outgamed by 180 yards per game. Your last four weeks average game of the week is Boise State over BYU minus eight. All right, let's take a look at your history play. Now, last week I gave you a history play, and it was Notre Dame, and they were against Syracuse, and I said, guess what? Notre Dame has won 25 straight ACC games. They were a dog last week against Syracuse. And as you know, Notre Dame won that game 41-24 to very handily. Uh, this week, they're taking on an ACC team. They are an underdog. Hmm, guess what my streak of the week is again, guys. We're going to come right back with Notre Dame plus the four po- three and a half or four points against Clemson. So Notre Dame plus four over Clemson. They've got more than just the streak, though. They have won 26 regular season games in a row against the ACC, including back in 2020 when DJ Uyunglele played for Clemson. We'll go back and look at the individual stats. You see right here, DJ played. uh, I'll bring this in a little so you can see the name. There's DJ. See it? Uh, DJ did play against Notre Dame, hit 29 of 44 for 439. But guess what? You look at the score, Notre Dame won the game, 47-40. In fact, Notre Dame had a 518, 473-yard edge. So Notre Dame has won 26 in a row against the ACC. Now, this is another one, which I didn't show you in the original, but this will make you comfortable. How about this? My projected box score on the game for my computer actually has Notre Dame winning the game 26-23. Remember, go in the front of the magazine and look at my computer projection. Like this year, it called for Tennessee to get 40, I don't know, 40-something plus points per game. And a lot of folks are like, "That's they're not going to do that. And they are. Uh, you'll be amazed how close those projections are at the end of the year. But you don't, don't factor them in until the season's over. But the weekly projections are just like that. Here it's saying Notre Dame wins the game 26-23. Notre Dame has a 389 to 295 yard edge. Outrushes Clemson 150 to 129. So my computer says Notre Dame wins the game outright. And then the other thing, and Todd put this on, you know, the the new format that we went to for the website is better. Uh, it's a lot better, especially for the store. But now if you click here, it takes you to the Phil Steele Plus menu. And the uh, Phil Steele Plus menu, uh, let's see if we got it over here. For some reason, that one's not working. There we go. Phil Steele Plus menu gets all these things. You can click on the team pages. And when you click on the team pages, I'm not sure why it's slow this morning, but it gets you the FBS. You can get the FCS team pages. We're a little slow here. And then the NFL team pages over here. I want to remind you that in the NFL, let's see, the Philadelphia Eagles are undefeated right now. Todd hasn't got yesterday's box score update yet, but I'll have the update soon. They've won every game. You can see that in green. 
Uh, if you want individual player stats, if you're a fantasy football player, there you go. If you want individual player stats from last year, how they did against the individual team, uh, let's get back to the Eagles there. Uh, you can click on the individual player stats here, and this tells you who played in the game and what they did all season long. You can see a games that Jalen Hurts missed last year, who the top rusher was. That's all there for the NFL. You get average game grades out here. You get opponents, how you do against your opponent ranking. Uh, you know, just like in the college, uh, how your offense does against the opponents. Philadelphia is plus 35. Defense is holding opponents to 52 below. They're number two in the NFL in that, number four in the NFL in that. So they look like an undefeated team at this point. But all that's available for the NFL. The FCS I'll get into in a few minutes. But let's get back to that uh, original page that we were just at over here. And um, a couple other things that you can get. You can get the strength of schedule. And I'm going to bring that up here. I think I'm bringing it up here. Yeah, it's strength of schedule. Let's bring that one up. And we're going to find that Notre Dame has played the 11th toughest schedule in the country so far. Let's go find where Clemson is. Clemson is number 61. So it's 11 against 61 for toughest schedule. Uh, so that's a nice edge that you have going for Notre Dame. The AGG on the game. Well, actually, let me show you this This part out here just to show you other things we have the pass efficiency defense updated this takes into account the strength of opponent that you play and puts it up here so illinois number one in pass efficiency uab number two michigan number three right now you can get the special teams rankings oh look at that oklahoma state had been number one but i had projected michigan to have the best special teams this year a few weeks ago they were down there at number 10 michigan's made a jump they're back up to number one so you got Michigan at number one, Texas number two, South Carolina number three, all those block punts, San Diego State number four figures. Oklahoma State's dropped to number five, still really good. But look at this, Notre Dame is number six in the special teams. Clemson is number nine, so not a big special teams edge there, but it takes you all the way down. So if you're looking for that hidden game, maybe take a look at who's at the top of the special teams against who's at the bottom. You might find a, a great hidden stat in there. The offense and defense YPG, which we just talked about for the NFL, Georgia has taken over. Ohio State had been number one. Georgia's up to number one. They're plus 291. What this means is Georgia's offense averages 151 yards per game, more than what their opponent allows. If their opponent allows three 300 yards per game. Georgia gains 451 against them. And defensively, same thing. They're holding opponents to 139 below their season average, basically 140. So if their opponents gain at 400 yards per game, Georgia's going to hold them to 260. Add the two together, and that's what gets you out here. This is an invaluable ranking. So at the top, Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, James Madison, Tennessee, Michigan, Illinois, and UCLA. UCLA, Florida State, LSU, Oregon, all up there. At the bottom of this, Massachusetts, New Mexico, Colorado State, Hawaii. You can spend hours on that. Well, not hours, but just spend an amount of time doing that. You get the individual offense, defense there. Strength of wins, pain of losses. Uh, this You get credit for every FBS win of an opponent you beat. If an opponent beat an FCS team, that's zero. Every FBS win of an opponent you beat. Ohio State leads the country right now at 29. Tennessee and Michigan are there at 26. Georgia, Alabama are there at 22. Naturally, when they start playing even bigger games coming up, they'll get a lot more credit for the wins. But if you go down to the bottom, this does the wins and losses. And I think you'll find this uh, fascinating. You see Alabama's got a zero here. Their team that beat them, Tennessee, has not lost a game. So they get credit for every loss of Tennessee. Tennessee hasn't got any losses. Now, if Tennessee loses to Georgia this week and Alabama wins, Alabama will get one loss because of a Tennessee loss this week. If Tennessee wins, they'll still be zero in this category. I find this one fascinating as well, and I, th I think you do. And this is all available for you each and every week. We've got power ratings up for you. That's my plus-minus ratings, the ones we put in the magazine. And we do update them weekly. Uh, we've got the YPP offense, the most efficient offense this year, Ohio State, followed by TCU, Tennessee, Georgia, USC. Uh, and even Kansas is up there. Wow, at number seven. And then we got the defense. Let's go take a look at the most efficient defenses here. It's right here. Uh, Illinois, Iowa, Oklahoma State, Michigan, Boise State, all at the top. I like this Boise State at 4.2. That plays on our Boise State BYU one. Where's BYU now after these last four weeks? Let's take a look defensively. They've been struggling. Here they are down here at number 106 for the season, giving up six yards per play. 
So that's an interesting one. Uh, links and newspapers, if you want to go to the individual school sites, there they are, right there. You just click right there. It takes you to the football section, naturally. So i got all that and more, but let's get right back to the tour. I'm just trying to show you how to use Phil Steel Plus to its fullest. Let's take a look at the next one, and it's my strength of schedule play. Okay, we were just at the strength of schedule. Let's go there real quick to get this one. I won't spend a lot of time on this game, but uh, we're going to take a look at strength of schedule. There we go. Strength of schedule. It's a little slow this morning. It's got to be something Todd's doing. We'll just blame Todd for everything. Uh, strength of schedule. We'll click on here. And we're going to take a look at Louisville against James Madison. Louisville is taking on the number 18 schedule in the country. James Madison is down here at number 127. So a big schedule strength edge this week for Louisville over James Madison. Not the only reason, naturally, that I, I like the game. But uh, definitely has a, a lot to do uh, with it. Um, come on, we need to get back to the store here or to the uh, team pages. We're just going to click up here. Be one second. The site's operating a little slow this morning. Not sure why. Uh, once again, we're going to go to Phil Steele Plus. We're going to go to team pages. We're going to put James Madison on the left because they're the visitor. And we're going to put Louisville on the right because they're the home team. I do this on every game. You should do this on every game as well. Uh, any game you're looking to bet, I mean, this just lines it up for you. You can see Louisville last four weeks playing a lot better. That 48-21 win, they beat a really good Pitt team, 24-10. They beat Virginia. Well, a couple of things I want to point out here under the individual player stats for Louisville. And we're going to see that Malik Cunningham got injured against Boston College. And Brock Doman came in and was bad. He only hit one of eight passes for 19 yards. He just had a bad game. Now, Doman played the entire game against Virginia and did well. So now when Doman comes off the bench, I feel better. So Malik Cunningham may miss a series or two, but when he plays, he's dynamic. But Doman coming off the bench isn't bad, as he was against Boston College, which cost him one game this year. Uh, running the ball, Tyon Evans is the Tennessee transfer. He's a PS number six. All right, that's really good. He missed Virginia and Pitt. You can see here, he's back. He played against Wake Forest, had 106 yards, and they won that game handily. So Louisville's in really good shape right now. They are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3. They need wins. They need to clinch a bowl spot here. They've got Clemson, NC State, Kentucky coming up. Pretty tough schedule. Why not make sure you're going to get to a bowl game? James Madison had been doing dynamic, but as pointed out, they haven't really played anybody. They lost to Georgia Southern by 7, and they lost to Marshall by 14 at home. They're somewhat of a banged-up football team. If you look at the player stats, they did not have Centeno. Uh, their quarterback against Marshall. Now, he could return this week, but Billy Atkins was 13-35. to 35. There's a possibility he might not return. So it's a team that's banged up on offense, banged up on defense, taking on a Louisville team that's in really good current form right now. And they are the strength of schedule play of the week, number 18 against number 127. We're going to take Louisville uh, minus, uh, once again, I didn't write the line on the sheet here. So let's make sure. I thought it was seven, but I want to just double check got a service that gives me lines across the country there they are uh they are minus seven or seven and a half against james madison for that one all right and your final six and final play it's my revenge play of the week and the revenge play of the week didn't win last week by a half point Michigan, for crying out loud, how many field goals can you kick in one game? Five field goals for Michigan. They dominate with a 27 to 11 first down edge. And once again, if you click on box, this tells you how the game was played. You can see that Michigan all game long. And by the way, thank you to um, Ted Ganji over at collegepressbox.com for letting us put the boxes. They give you the complete box on every game. As you see, Michigan... 22-yard field goal, that's from the 5-yard line. 25-yard uh, field goal, that's an 86-yard, 15-play drive settle for a field goal. 39, 33, 54-yard field goals on 57, 54, on 11, 9, 8-play drives. We had the ball all doggone game. And even at the end, uh, Michigan was trying to score. I go through the play-by-play -play of every single game, every single week. Just to make sure I don't miss anything. I got my 12 TVs in front of me. And by the way, every Saturday morning, I've been posting pictures of nine TVs. Because there's only been nine games on at 12 o'clock noon. 
There are 12 games on. So this Saturday, look at my Twitter at PhilSteel042. You'll see a picture of all 12 games I'm watching at 12 o'clock noon this week. There are 60 some odd games this week, 64 games next week, 67 games next week. Every school is playing. Nobody's on buys. So the TVs will be loaded up all day long. I don't take pictures in the middle of the day. I'm just too busy to take more pictures. But I do take some pictures right at the start of the day. So check out Phil Steele or at Phil Steele 42 on Twitter for that. But you see at the end of the game, Michigan's even trying to come down here and score again. They even threw a pass deep here. Uh, which I thought, oh, this could be it. Pass interference got them down to the 32-yard line, and they didn't end up scoring. But they won by 22, laying 22 and a half, or the revenge play would have won last week. But this week's revenge play, we're going to take a look at UAB against UTSA. So let's put UAB on the right and UTSA on the left. UAB's at home, and let's click on them. Once again, the site's a little slow this morning. Hopefully it won't be that slow for you while you're using it. Uh, let's click on FBS Team Pages. Come on. There we go. All right. We're going to put UAB on the right. One thing I want you to notice about UAB, home win, road loss, home win, road loss, home win, home win, road loss, road loss. Now, these road losses could easily have been road wins. I mean, they lost by three at Western Kentucky. It's a game they led 17-10 at the half. Last week, they had a 482 to 359 yard edge. They did have their backup quarterback in the game. Dylan Hopkins was out. Jacob Zeno played. Once again, you can check here. You see that Hopkins actually got injured early against Western Kentucky. Zeno struggled, but they still had the yardage edge. Florida Atlantic, they had a large yardage edge. Came up short on the scoreboard. Probably should have won the game. Uh, in the game, they got down in FAU territory like four times and kept getting stopped and ended up losing the game by seven. So UAB is better than its record, uh, and they are great at home. UTSA is a good team. Their only losses to Texas and Houston, as you can see, they're playing well. They do have some red over here. But we showed you before the pass efficiency defense. UAB does have a very good pass efficiency defense to line up against Frank Harris, so it's strength against strength. But the other thing I want to point out, we'll take a look at last year's game. Now, last year when these two played, they were playing for the – CUSA, a chance to get to the CUSA title game. UAB led 24-17 at the half. We go to the box score here. UTSA took over and drove 77 yards in seven plays. This play, this one-yard touchdown pass, I'd like to have a video of it. It was like a bobbled snap from center. Harris rolls to his left, throws end zone, tipped by the DB, and caught for a touchdown. And UTSA's in the CUSA title game, not UAB. I think legitimate revenge this year for UAB. As you can tell, UAB's better than its record. They're basically outgaining everybody this year. Uh, and they are... In CUSA play, UTSA is a very good plus 100. UAB's plus 135, and we got a team that's great at home. Also throw in these factors. Uh, you've got UAB is 7-2 against the spread as a home dog, 21-8-1 against the spread at home. I'm going to take UAB as my revenge game of the week. They are plus one. They are a home dog against UTSA this week, and they get the revenge. All right, let's get on to the quick hitters, and we'll try to make them quick for you. Uh, let's get to... Oklahoma State is at Kansas. Kansas on the right. Now, they may get Jalen Daniels back. Jalen Daniels originally thought to be lost for the year. They could get him back this week, but I still like Oklahoma State. Once again, if you click on right here, the opponent, you get the last 25 years matchups. Look at this, guys. Oklahoma State's won every game but one since 1998. They've won 12 in a row. They have won the last seven. I did the math for you. See the last seven scores? They have won those seven games by a total of 35 points per game. Last year, when these two teams played, Oklahoma State, let's look over here, led 38 to nothing at the half with a 331 to 49 yard edge. You know what the first downs were at the half, guys? I could show you over here uh, in the box score uh, when we look at it. In the first quarter, come on. In the first quarter, uh, we saw Kansas with zero first downs, okay? Nine to zero first down advantage. In the second quarter, Kansas had zero first downs. 21 to nothing first down edge at the half for Oklahoma State. So as you can tell, last year and the previous 12 years, they have been far superior to Kansas. Guess what? 
Oklahoma State's an underdog in this game. And they are also off a horrible game. So nobody wants Oklahoma State this week. But Mike Gundy, 15-5-1 against the spread off a loss. Here they beat Texas, as you could tell, against the spread. Uh, here they beat Notre Dame. Here they pummeled Kansas. That's pretty good off a loss. So, and you can go back here and check the spreads. Once again, last 40 years, go back and take a look. Take a look every time they lost a game and then see how they did the next week. You will find 15, 5, and 1 for Mike Gundy, which is very good. And once again, they've just absolutely dominated the series. All right, I told you I make these somewhat quick. Let's make them somewhat quick today. We're going to put Nebraska on the right and we're going to put Minnesota on the left. Okay, I just clicked on Minnesota by mistake there. We'll get that one corrected. Minnesota on the left and Nebraska on the right. And this one I'll make somewhat quick. couple notes here. Nebraska last week actually played a pretty good game against Illinois. Uh, look at the yards at the half. Illinois is a really good team, okay? I, I want to show you Illinois for a second. Just one quick second on Illinois. I understand that the Internet's moving a little slow here, so it takes a little bit on these clicks. But look at Illinois. They are number six in the country in my AGG. They are dominating everybody. They dominated Minnesota, outgained them by 292 yards. They beat Iowa by 94 yards, Wisconsin by 96. So they have dominated every single team. They are plus 186 yards per game on the year and number six in the country in my AGG. That's a really good team. How did Nebraska do against them last week? Well, at the half, Nebraska was only outgained 225 to 219. What happened was, if you look here under individual player stats, they lost their quarterback, Casey Thompson. Casey Thompson went out of the game with injury, as you see here. The backups, Chuba Purdy, who's a Florida State transfer, Logan Smothers, both struggled. In fact, Nebraska had just 39 yards in the second half. Those guys were taking snaps with the number twos last week. They'll probably take snaps with the number ones this week, be better acclimated. And I think Nebraska's playing pretty good football. In fact, if you look at the last four weeks, Nebraska's playing to a 99.2 level. Minnesota's playing to a 100 level. So if you throw in the home field edge, Nebraska's actually favored by 2.1 in the last four weeks AGG. So it's a last four weeks AGG play. We're going to take Nebraska plus 16 over Minnesota. All right, let's take a look at another one. We're going to take Iowa State on the left, and we are going to take, or no, actually Iowa State's on the right because they're the home team. We're going to take West Virginia and put them on the left here. Let's click back there. We'll get Iowa State put up here while this coming out and we'll click back here to FBS team pages and West Virginia. All right, West Virginia on the left, Iowa State on the right. I want to show you how West Virginia plays on the road. They lost to Texas by 18. They lost to Texas Tech by 38. They struggle on the road. We all know what happened here. I lost an inside the press box play last week, guys. You know what happened. In the TCU game, uh, we've got this thing locked up. It is fourth and one. We're only down three. We're getting seven and a half, eight points in the game. And West Virginia... Uh, basically, TCU is just trying to run out the clock. There's 20 seconds left in the game. And what happens is the uh, West Virginia player jumps off sides. Now, the TCU quarterback could have taken a knee, and the game would have been over because they run out the clock. Instead, he throws end zone, and they get a touchdown pass with 20 seconds left and win the game by 10. West Virginia uh, was only outgained by 64 yards in the game, and it was a lot of it was that last drive when TCU was just trying to kill the clock. Tough, tough loss for the press box last week. But uh, as good as I liked West Virginia last week, and as well as I played, they should have won the game. They should have covered the game, uh, I should say. Uh, they just struggle on the road. And Iowa State, just amazing. These guys are plus 12 yards per game, despite the fact they're 0-5 in Big 12 play. How are you 0-5 in Big 12 play and plus 12 yards per game? They're the anti-Michigan State of last year. Michigan State last year was minus 62 yards per game in Big 10 play, yet somehow finished 11-2 and in number 10 in the polls. This Iowa State team is much better than its record would indicate. Uh, West Virginia, meanwhile, in conference play, minus 103 yards per game. So in conference play, they're playing to a 94 level. They're playing to a 106 level. That tells you right there that uh, Iowa State 11.5 factor in the four-point home field edge because it's on grass. It's a long trip. West Virginia struggles on the road. 
And uh, now all of a sudden you're looking at a 15-point difference. My last four weeks, by the way, has Iowa State playing to a 106 level and West Virginia at a 93 level. So that's saying West Virginia by 17.6. Matt Campbell is 47-21 at home. Neil Brown is 6-14 and straight up on the road. Add it all up like Iowa State minus 7 over West Virginia. All right, two quick hitters here on the FCS games. I won't spend a lot of time on them, but – uh, one of team uh, we've got VMI is I believe VMI is on the road here, and you guys remember VMI from last week, right? We used Mercer against them, and let's see if they're on the road or not. I believe they are. Yeah, they are. They're on the road against Samford, and here is Samford on the right. Uh, so they played a good team last week in Mercer. We used Mercer minus the points. Mercer had a 540 to 134 yard edge, won the game 55 14. Frankly, I'm surprised VMI got 14 points. Uh, VMI's offense on the year is averaging 268 yards per game. They can't run the ball 70 yards per game. And throwing the ball, they have five touchdown passes and they have eight, 11, 13 interceptions on the year. So they struggle throwing the ball. Uh, they've been sacked 28 times, 10.4%. They can't stop the run. They're allowing 211 yards per game, 4.7, and they're giving up 66% completions. So they're basically bad in all four areas. And we've been going against VMI religiously here on the Phil Steele Plus Tour. They're getting 26 and a half, but they're taking out a really good Sanford team. Who'd Sanford lose to this year? Georgia. That's their only loss. Other than that, they've been rolling teams. Last week, they beat the Citadel 38-3. to They are playing for a playoff berth. They need impressive wins to get to the playoff. Their defense has had some games where they've given up some yards. But look at this. VMI has struggled all year against anybody. They're tops that they've had. And they've had some bad teams they've played, like Bucknell. Uh, they've only had 356 yards for their top game. So I think what we're going to see here is a Sanford team that's playing really well. Uh, I'm going to lay the 26 and a half at home in this one. The last four weeks says 81.7 versus 51.3. That says uh, 33.4 they win by. And once again, they're laying 26 and a half. We're going to take Samford. And the one final thing that I looked at when I was playing around with this last night, look at this. They lost the VMI last year. They, so this is a legitimate revenge game for Samford. Take out your pound of salt. Get Go ahead and get uh, VMI in this one. We're taking Sanford. And the other one we're going to look at today uh, is Fordham against Bucknell. Bucknell is at home and Fordham is on the road. Now, you guys know all about Fordham. I've been talking about them a lot on this Phil Steele Plus tour. They have an explosive offense, 605 yards per game, 50 points per game. Last week, we used them against Holy Cross. They were getting, I think, double digits in that game. And they nearly won the game outright. Holy Cross got a very late score in overtime to pull that one out by one, or else Fordham wins the game. 29 first downs against Holy Cross's defense. By the way, Bucknell did play Holy Cross. They lost that game 57 to nothing. You want to know another team that Bucknell played? How about VMI? They lost to VMI for crying out loud by 10. They had 178 yards offense against VMI's defense. So they are playing Fordham's defense, which has given up some yards this year, but Fordham's taken on some pretty good opponents this season, including Holy Cross last week. Holy Cross has a really good team. Prior to that, against some weaker teams, they had been playing better defense, and I would expect taking on a team that's only gaining 238 yards per game, 3.1 on the ground. They're hitting 45% of their passes. They're going to struggle. Now, defensively, they're not horrendous, but nobody slows down Fordham. Fordham just put up 52 points on Holy Cross, for crying out loud. They had 52 on Ohio. Ohio's a really good team. They should have beaten Ohio. Ohio got a late touchdown to force overtime. Ohio may win the MAC this year, for crying out loud, and Fordham nearly played them. So you got a really good Fordham team. We're only laying 19 and a half on the road against a team that lost to VMI. We're trying for a playoff spot. Our offense averages 605 yards per game. Their offense averages 238 yards per game. We're going to go with Fordham minus 19 and a half. I hope you learned a lot about how to use Phil Steele Plus. We even have individual player stats, by the way, for the FCS. Uh, so you could tell how Tim Demorant's doing. You could see the big games that uh, Coco Solis is having at the receiver at 320 yards he had against Ohio. Hasn't repeated it. Hasn't actually had a 100-yard game. We had 226 from M.J. Wright. Doesn't matter who's catching the passes for him. 
Uh, it's really been a, a potent offense for Fordham, but you can go back on Fordham and take a look at their history all the way down to 2012. That's all up here on Phil Steele Plus. So thanks for taking the tour with me. I'll be back with you next week on uh, Friday, November the 11th. We'll have six more plays, five more quick hitters. And once again, thanks for taking the Phil Steele Plus tour.